I'd like to call the Village Board meeting to order. If you'd stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everyone here tonight and welcome everyone participating by phone and all those who will be watching on video. Madam Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Trustee Carter. Trustee Mariscal. Present. Trustee Kazam. Trustee Gett. Present. Trustee Weisenberg. Present. Trustee DeVore. Present. Okay, so we do have a quorum then. Welcome again, everyone. Just a, just a moment. Trustee Kazam, is that you? Yeah. Okay, Trustee Kazam is present as well. Okay. Sorry, Mayor. That's okay. Okay, just a, one thing I'd like to announce is I want to thank both um, police and fire for making visits to our younger citizens in the Heights at their homes, wishing them happy birthday wishes. So uh, I know you all have done a few of those, so thanks to everyone for doing that. Um, we would be at any comments. Is there anyone on the line that would like to make a public comment? I'll unmute all participants to allow them to speak. You are muted. No, nope. sorry. You are unmuted. If there's anyone on the line who'd like to make a comment, please do so. Any public comment? Going once, going twice, public comment is closed, but we're on the subject. If you do have anyone out there watching or listening in, please call us here at Village Hall. Uh, we have emails that are available online or, or calls, so we are continue to be interested in, in public input. We would be at trustee reports. The first is public works. Trustee Carter. Not here. Okay. Um, we do have Superintendent Marfell. Mike Super Casey or Dave Marfell, are you on the line? Both are on the line. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. here, Mayor. Uh, Mike, uh, go first, and then Dave, if there's anything you have under Public Works. Okay, just a, just a briefing. Uh, we're trimming alleys. We're fixing uh, all uh, winter water main breaks where the road was tore up with asphalt. Uh, we're starting our grass trimming and uh, just trying to get the roads to get focused and move on forward, and we're staying as safe as possible. Thanks, Mike. That's all I have. Thank you, Mike. How about you, Dave? Yeah, um, the our 2019 water quality report has been released. Um, all the customers either uh, have and should have in their mail shortly a uh, postcard with a link, uh, which they can access the report. You can also go to the Bill's website, and if you select on the water office, at the bottom of the page, you can click on the link and the, the report is on there. Um, the one thing I want to point out about the report is um, at the bottom on the violation summary, um, we again, for the year 2019, had zero violations. I believe our last violation was 2006, so we're going on 13 years with no violations. Um, if a resident wants to pick up, uh, or if a resident needs a paper copy of the report, they can call the water office and we can send them one free of charge. And that's all I have. Thank you, guys. Uh, trustees, any questions for Dave or Mike? Dustin, anything else? Nothing. I got a quick question. Go ahead, was the new was the new water rate put on the bills? Is it effective yet? Stephanie, yes, you? it is. Was it put on the bills? Because I don't think I've seen it. It's So it's a rolling scale. Uh, depending on what book you're in, you may not have actually had it come yet. Are you book two by chance? I should probably know that, but I don't. Okay. <laughs> Ask me after the meeting. I'll look it up for you at okay. your account, and we'll see what's going on. Okay. Anything else, Trustee Weisenberg? No. Okay, we'll move on to building and property maintenance. Do you have a report, Trustee Mariscal? I do not have anything. Nothing. Okay. We'll go to Economic and Community Development. Trustee Kazam. 
Hi there, Mayor and everyone, all my fellow trustees. I have a few things to report. Um, the first is a quick report on um, the River Economic Development Coalition. I just wanted to let you know that even though our meetings have been halted until June at this time, the KDB group has um, funded to the tune right now of $5,000 um, our community's participation in the Scenic Byway um, initiative and their website, which will open our region up to worldwide um, access. And then the other thing I wanted to report on is the business development district. I attended the last meeting, um, let's see, probably like six to seven weeks ago, and they did pass the budget at that time. Stephanie Turner can comment on that. And I had a lengthy conversation with Kevin Shields today and just got a report on what the small businesses um, are doing at this time. And they are have not taken a vote or met on this, but they're conveying that they realize that it's up to us as trustees in the village to decide what to do with the small surplus that they have in that fund. But they uh, are hoping that, and I think we will, um, you know, look to helping our small businesses on that. And so there'll be further discussion. I just want my fellow trustees to know that there'll be further discussion about that. And lastly, the Paycheck Protection Program. I think we all know that due date was April 10th, and quite a few small businesses in our community applied for that. I don't have an exact number on how many people were approved or were denied. As we all know, Congress is voting on that in the next week to continue funding. They had a lot of applications, probably more than they had anticipated. Um, but we will get more information on that for the next meeting. And I don't know, maybe Chief Sutton has more to add to that. Yeah, before I ask Dustin to chime in, I, I want to take this time to personally thank Chris Setti with the EDC for his leadership in helping the region and local businesses deal with this crisis. And the grant process has been very, very difficult to get through. So Dustin can explain more of that to you. And uh, he's, you've done a, a great job on that, Dustin. So would you uh, give the board an update on that process, how it went? Well, as you know, it was a lengthy process. Uh, we did a great job getting all the information out to the business owners. Uh, a lot of applicant, a lot of applicants. I know that uh, some were already uh, awarded some of the smaller grants. The uh, going back to what Trustee Kazam said about the uh, BDD. I'm currently working with Steve Klein on some different uh, opportunities to what we can do. What are some different options? So there's a lot being being done on that, um, and, I, and I hope to have something in the next couple of weeks to at least roll out something that could help our businesses. Okay. Any questions, trustees? The the surplus. Um, and did, did anybody happen to watch um, Trump's um, news conference tonight? Yeah. He did say on there that the that Congress had passed um, more money for the FDA for loans for small businesses. So that's a good thing. I guess that should be rolling out here shortly. Um, apparently, they ran out of money because it was going to big businesses prior, and they're making mm -hmm. them pay that back. So if anybody's interested in those loans, um, that should be rolling out here, I guess, in the next week or two. And we will continue to blast all that information out to the board, uh, the chamber, and every everything. I, I think we we probably sent them about seven emails in the last ten days, uh, different grants, different opportunities. Uh, the problem is that some of them ran into when I talked to them, they just didn't qualify. Whether you know, uh, depending on what grant you're looking at, but uh, but some do. So we're trying to come up with some different alternatives for those businesses that don't qualify. For maybe we can, we can come at a different angle through the BDD or something. So. And if I could just add, I don't know if you can hear me. Am I muted? No, we hear you. Okay. There are, um, are other grants out there. I, um, there's, there are resources for the beauty industry, which is one of the many industries that have been very hard hit. So the Professional Beauty, beauty Association has put together a set of industry resources um, and funding, a small grant program um, probably about $500 maximum, but it's any little bit helps. And if anyone has any questions about that, they can email me 
at my village email. And in addition to that, the Small Business Fund, which is the United States Chamber Foundation, has launched a Save Small Business Fund. And this is funded by contributions from the corporate and philanthropic partners. And that grant is up to $5,000. So I welcome any kind of solicitation or questions, and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Thank you, Trustee Kazam. Trustee Weisenberg, go ahead. Uh, Trustee Kazam, you said there was a small surplus in the BDD uh, fund. Do you know what that amount is? Well, I'm going to defer to Stephanie Turner. I just attended the BDD meeting, and there was, I don't know if Stephanie will answer the question if it is a surplus or a projected surplus based on this. The last meeting happened probably, I want to say, days, like maybe five to seven to ten days before we really got hit very hard with this COVID stuff. So can I defer yes. that to Stephanie Turner and she'll answer that question? So Trustee Weisenberg, to answer your question, uh, the last time the BDD met was in early March. They have not had an opportunity to meet since we are under a stay-at-home order. Uh, the What they are thinking of specifically is at the time they were reviewing the budget, uh, there was approximately $75,000 allocated to a sidewalk program and they did not support that sidewalk program instead they wanted to save those funds uh, to come up with a different idea for a project so they are probably thinking of that particular amount when they talk about the surplus i do not that that is correct yes there are funds, there are cash reserves within the BDD. Um, specifically, I know that there is approximately $75,000 that they have reserved for a larger capital infrastructure project. Um, it's unallocated as of right now, so that could possibly be used as reserve funds. There are also reserve funds just inherently within it. There will definitely be impact to that budget because of what is happening right now. I have scaled back their receipts some, but it's a similar situation to how I scaled back the receipts of the general fund. Tried to be not overly cautious, but also not overly optimistic. So it's going to take some time for us to kind of get, see what's actually happening um, before we really know the full impact of it. So um, there, there is money immediately available, but we also need to be aware there will be some impact. Was that the sidewalk program that went down past Sherman's? Yes, it was. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Trustee Kazam. We'll move on to administration. Trustee Gett. Thank you, Mayor. I have nothing to report unless the Chief has something. I think the, the only thing I have, I just asked the board members to pay attention to the, uh, the next zoning board agenda next month because uh, there's going to be some items on there. Uh, we'll keep you updated and make sure you have all the information you need. So um, that's all I have. Thank you. On to fire. Trustee Weisenberg. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I do not have anything. Chief, it's nice to have you here tonight. Is there anything you'd like to report on other than your... We'll get your... Oh. No, I'm good. Okay. Police, Trustee DeVore. Um, thank you, Mayor. All I have tonight is just to continue to remind everybody to stay at home. Um, our police officers are working hard and just making sure everyone's following the order, but so far so good, and just to keep up the good work. Thank you. Anything, Chief Sutton? All right. Thank you. All right. We would be at old business. Anyone have any old business? We'll move, we'll move right on to new business. The first is discussion of an ordinance amending the open burning provision of the village code for the village of Peoria Heights, Illinois, during the period of disaster declaration. This was something Trustee Carter wanted on the agenda. Trustee Carter, are you on the phone? Trustee Carter is not here. She, I, she, she did. She did uh, email said that she'd be late joining the call. It, it's up to the trustees. I would just say we move on and we'll it's fine we put it me. on the I next agenda. If that's put it off, I make the motion to table it since Trustee Carter is not here. I can do that uh, if there's no if there's no objection, uh, Council. We can just do that. Let's well, I mean, just. Should, it, I mean, we, should we discuss it? Because I I think Carter when she brought it up, I. It sounded like she was the only one that was in favor of it, so. I, uh, because I'm against it. You want to discuss it? Sure. All right, go ahead. Um, 
as the mayor was saying, uh, Trustee Carter had uh, recommended a temporary uh, ban on open burning. Um, but looking at our current ordinance, um, it kind of addresses a lot of the complaints that we've seen lately. Um, I believe in our ordinance it says when atmospheric conditions are readily will readily dis dissipate contaminants. Um, and I think Trustee Carter's concern was is that when people are burning and they're filling their neighbor's house with smoke, that that could make the conditions of COVID-19 worse. But if the atmospheric conditions aren't quickly dissipating that contaminant, they shouldn't be opening burning anyway, according to our ordinance. Um, so I kind of feel that our ordinance already covers Trustee Carter's concerns. Um, so perhaps maybe, even though I would hate to tax the, the police department anymore, I think they do a good job with the uh, keeping the fire um, people from burning non-yard waste stuff. But should we look at maybe strengthening our ordinance um, rather than adding more to it? Is well, the main initial. concern is people are burning and they got some leaves they raked up while they're wet or they got grass clippings and they throw that on there and they walk and it smolders and it just fills up the entire neighborhood not just your neighbor it fills up and right. uh people just let it go and you know it, you got to keep that under control you can't let that smoke so if, i hate to put anything else on our officers either but if you're going down the road and you look and you see a bunch of smoke there's something wrong there i mean Couple of weeks, was it last week or whatever? You came up down my alley, down my alley, up in front of my street. I was like, I thought we had the place, the whole neighborhood was on fire because you kept circling. But I don't think we need to add any more restrictions. I think it covers it. Uh, it's six in the morning till six at night. I mean, unless you want to make it that they gotta wait uh, till dusk. You know, the dusk has gotta be over with. Because when winter time comes, dust is going to be shorter. But right now, I think the, the main, I'm talking about the contaminants and everything, their biggest problem is smoldering leaves, you know, that causes the smoke. If you got, I, I got a pile of uh, yard waste in my burn pit right now, too green to burn, but when it comes time, that's going to burn up quick. It's not going to leave smoke. So, uh, our, that the only problem is the uh, is burning the leaves, and I think, like you said, the ordinance we have now already addresses all that. So I think I don't think we need to ban it, Chief. If someone was burning smoldering leaves or wet leaves, and it was filling a neighbor's house with smoke, which is a lot of the complaints, if not all of the complaints, um, would our court current ordinance give the police department enough? leeway to say hey listen you got to put this thing out or do we need more strict language saying you can't fill your neighbor's house with smoke it gives it leeway now would it hold up in adjudication you know in ordinance court i can't tell you that it depends on the judge um but something like that we're going to roll the fire department anyway probably if it's that big of a smoke to check it out um but a lot of times neighbors call in those types of circumstances and we get a very good compliance from the neighbors when we kind of handle it with kid gloves and say that, you know, your neighbor um, is having, you know, is being affected by this. And, you know, I would say we have a high percentage that uh, those individuals put the fire out. So, you know, um, do I think it needs to be changed? I, I, don't, I don't think it's to that point. We don't see a lot of that where uh, residents dig in and say, well, I can burn, so there's nothing you can do about it. So, you know, I think that we're getting compliance. Uh, there is some teeth in our ordinance now as far as what you can and can't do, and our guys right. do a good job, and most of the problems we have, and I don't want to spend all night talking about this, I know because Trustee Carter isn't here, and we'll probably be discussing it again, but the majority of the problems we have is people burning construction materials. That would probably be 80% of our, our complaints when it comes to this, um, and we have some repeat offenders. You know, um, but nothing with uh, recreational, obviously, with your fire pits and the community. They know once in a while we'll get somebody that throws in a block, you know, something, uh, construction material in the fire pit. We have to police, which, you know, that's just, it's, it's just part well, of the course. So, anyway. Some people think insulation, you can just throw it right on there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. 
But I, I mean, but, it might go, but it stinks. But the citations we do write, we've, I've seen them both. I've seen them go through the courts, uh, the fines, plead guilty, done. Then I've seen some thrown out. So, okay. um, w however, even changing that, I think we're going to be in the same boat. I think depending on who the judge handling the adjudication right. down, you know, so. Right. And do we want to see if any of the other trustees on the line have any? Anyone else have any comments on the burning? I, this is Trustee DeVore. I would not be opposed to have discussion on maybe compromising and selecting times that we maybe allow landscape burning or 30 days of the week, but I think to just completely ban it for a short period of time is really more hassle than what it would be worth. All right. Anyone, well, anyone else? Okay, Trustee Weisberg, go ahead. Uh, everyone's probably seen this email, but I was looking at um, other towns around our size. Um, Chillicothe, for example, they have schedules to where you can burn yard waste um, from April 1st to May 31st, and then October 1st to December 15th between a certain period of time. Um, that may be a fair compromise. Um, uh, well, while we're, while we're on that, I, you know, uh, Administrator Sutton and myself are looking to the, bo the board. The trustee asked this to put on the agenda. I'd, I'd like one or both of you to give us some language so we can, if you want us to draft something, either okay. in an amendment, that's what we'd like to see, and then we can have Mark help with that. But if, if everyone's, if the consensus is to leave this alone, that's what we will do. But do that's you have, can, can you, at, before the next meeting, uh, give us some ideas on what you would like to amend? I will. He and sent he sent emails out to everybody and stuff, but I think we just leave it as is and let the well. Then that's that. So we can, if that's your opinion, then you can vote against the amendment. Well, I will. I'm just saying. I put my opinion out there that I don't think we need to mess with. It. I think it's fine. I did see his what he sent out, and it's pretty reasonable because by June and until was that through September. We really don't need to be burning too much anyhow. Of course, we can back it up to September 29th. That's my birthday. I might want to have a little celebration. But other than that, uh, I don't have a problem with leaving it the way it is. I'm more than happy to discuss it again. But in my opinion right now is it, it, they're doing a good job with it as it is. The, our, our officers are pretty uh, reasonable people, and they don't come, out, come down with like they're uh, stormtroopers or anything. They do a good job, and I have no problem with uh, our forces here and the way everything's handled. So, Thank you, Trustee Getz. So any trustee that wants to send us some language, then we will put it on the agenda if we get some langu language for change. Okay, let's move on to okay. action item. It's approval of Ordinance 2020-1622, an ordinance authorizing imposition of a residential waste and disposal fee. Trustee Get. I make a motion to approve action item uh, 2020 1622. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay, this was basically put on there because when we passed it last year, I wanted, I put my little footprint on this of wanting to address this every year just in case things have changed economically so we could maybe eliminate it, lower the cost. Whatever. Well, with this current situation, that's not going to happen. And we're getting ready to uh, sunset on this, if I'm correct. And we need to get this passed today to get it All right, Stephanie. This needs to be passed today in order to, we, we're not going to be able to cancel it. Finance, uh, the the, the co 19 or COVID 19 is not helping us any. So, Unfortunately, I move we go ahead and pass this. Thank you, Trustee. Get um, discussion. Yeah. So this will still sunset again in a year. We have a really year. We'll come back and visit again in a year. Okay. And uh, just a reminder too, uh, the board could bring forth any amendment at any time uh, before the year is up too. Uh, right. Anyone else? If you're ready for the question, Madam Clerk. Right, go ahead. I'm sorry, this is Cheryl Carter. I'm sorry I'm late. I just want to let you know that I'm signed on now. Just okay, thank you, Trustee Carter. Welcome. 
Okay, we are now voting on approval of the imposition of a residential waste collection and disposal fee. Madam Clerk? Trustee Carter. <laughs> okay, since I just popped in, I'm sorry, and again, I apologize. This is just until the COVID-19 is completed or uplifted, right? Well, no, it's for a year. We're talking about the waste it's for the fee. Garbage. Trustee Carter is for the garbage. Uh, it's for the ten dollars on the water bill. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, nay. Trustee Mariscal. Trustee Mariscal. Aye. Trustee Kazam. Aye. Trustee Gat. Aye. Trustee Weisenberg. This hurts, but I. Aye. Trustee DeVore. Aye. Mayor, that passes five to one. Thank you if that passes. Next is an action item, approval of ordinance 2020-1626, amending the village code for the village of Peoria Heights, Illinois, to provide for omnibus voting. Trustee Gett. I make a motion to uh, approve ordinance 2020-1626. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Uh, Council, you want to explain what th this does? Thank you, Mayor. Um, this was brought up at the last meeting. Um, omnibus voting is just a fancy word for voting on items in a group. So routine matters uh, can be listed on the agenda. Typically, we call it a consent agenda. And it would be items that are not expected to draw any no votes from anybody. And the omnibus voting provision requires unanimous approval. So if there is anything that uh, the clerk lists in that group of uh, consent agenda items that anybody wants to discuss or that anybody plans to vote no on, you, you know, the mayor will, when he introduces the consent agenda, ask if anybody has anything they want to pull from that agenda for individual attention, like any of the other action items, and you pull those things off, and then whatever remains can be voted on with one vote um, instead of calling it, having a motion, a second, discussion, and then a roll call vote. Just uh, streamline, save time for, for items that don't require discussion and uh, debate and that uh, are likely to draw unanimous approval. Th thank you, Council, for that good explanation. And just uh, a little bit more information. I, I would expect this is going to be business that's already been approved in the departmental meeting. Correct. Um, and, you know, sometimes someone might want to pull something. Well, for instance, there's been meetings where we might have five or six requests for the use of Tower Park and maybe someone wants to pull something from the agenda for an organization that they're familiar with or they want to recognize. So all those sorts of things can be done um, just for the sake of a of better run business meeting. But again, yep. anyone can pull anything from that agenda and it could be voted on separately. So. Correct. Correct. So, so if I could walk through the process just so I understand it a little better. So when a new business item comes before the board, it'll enter or be introduced during like a departmental meeting and then we'll debate it and then we'll say okay we're ready for the vote we'll move it move it to the next meeting that's when it'll be in the omnibus I, I would say typically that is exactly the way it would happen um, I can't I can't say it would be inappropriate to put something on there that's that's a first-time item but again you're guessing the clerk um, probably confers with me and Chief Sutton and mayor you know are, are these items appropriate for the consent agenda? Yes. And then, you know, if, if we have one on there that people want to discuss, any of the trustees can pull that. I, I would expect a lot that, of time this is better explained, I mean, this is better in my mind called a consent agenda. It is a consent agenda. That's exactly what it is. Look at websites of other public bodies in the area. It's, it's very routine. Um, a lot have consent agendas. Again, our departmental issues, if they require... If it's an ordinance change, we're going to have a separate vote on that. But again, yep. I, I, I see like requests for Tower Park, those sorts of things being on there, and not many, but there might be there might be months where there's nothing on the consent agenda. Right. So if if there was like an organization that was coming to make the request of us, we, we if we knew they were coming, we would not put it on the consent agenda. So if they wanted to come and speak, it would not be on the consent agenda. Correct. Well, and if that ever happened... Be, but I would always call out anyone that's here. We always want to bring them up and let them, in my mind, talk about their event. 
So, but a lot of those folks, if you, you know, would come to the departmental meeting first, right. we've already heard from them and we're now televising the departmental meetings. So um, there might be on the consent agenda, approval of the use of Tower Park. If they're not at the meeting, we would go on with that. But if, if someone's at the meeting, we always want to, I think, call them up and let them talk about their event, but we could still vote on it on the consent agenda too. So. And just so I understand the process, is there any procedure within the Roberts Rules of Order that we can use as a guide so that we all know how to remove something from the package? Yeah, um, Roberts allows anybody to adopt its own procedural rules for okay. omnibus voting. So okay. exactly what we're doing. Okay. So pretty much what you can do is every meeting that comes up, we have it, and you decide, okay, the departmental meeting, you had no problem with it being on the omnibus. Then when we come to the meeting that we're going to vote on it, if you've had a change of mind or somebody else has had a change of mind, they can say, uh, wait a minute, I would like this removed, right? right? Yep, absolutely. They can say that right in the middle of the meeting. I don't want, I want this item of the omnibus, I want it removed, I want this voted on separately, and we can talk about it again. I mean, yep. and usually a lot of times they all have something in common, usually when yes. it's omnibus. So. Is, is Small expenditures, routine approvals. Corner fundraising. Yeah, stop sign fundraiser, tower park. One last question. So it just takes one trustee to pull something out of that? Absolutely, anybody. Because if, if it doesn't get unanimous approval, then, then, then none of the items are approved. Okay. So you kind of have to speak up. If it's something you're going to vote no on one of the three items or one of the six items, you need to say, hey, you know, I need to pull one of those off. Well, and back to Robert's rules, you can always divide any question. Okay. So that, yep. that would be a comprehensive vote, but yep. you can divide the question on anything. So, And we all pretty much get along. So if, if you want to pull it out or somebody else wants to, somebody will back and say, well, okay, let's take that out and pass the other ones and get on with business. So I, I, I think this is a good thing. This is just... You know, and really what's this is just this, doing laundry work, right? Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll save us some time, add a few meetings, not... It, what prompted it was at the last meeting or meeting, a couple of meetings ago when we were going through our first uh, meeting under the shelter at home, there were a whole lot of right. things that the board had already approved in departmental meeting that if we'd have voted on them separately, it would have taken, taken a forever. little while longer, but it just seemed like a more efficient way to do business. It's still, they'll all be on the agenda right. um, to begin with. And again, you can pull any, any one can, person can pull anything. You don't need a second to pull okay. anything from the agenda. Okay. Yeah, the only concern I had initially was when you hear the word omnibus, you, uh, at least on the state and federal level, it lacks of transparency because they sneak stuff in when these giant bills. It's, it's um, politics. Yeah, so as long as we're yeah, congressionally, to, it's usually spending bills that, that right. get on of us, where, where it's across agencies and different departments. But right. it's it's any time you're grouping together several unrelated items for one vote, the word omnibus applies. And that's the, the word the state statutes use, so I used it. It, right. it is kind of a dirty word yeah. for that reason. It is very. <laughs> um, but after the explanation, I mean, I, I don't have any concerns with it. Uh, okay. Thank you, Trustee Weisenberg. And also, a lot of public bodies decide in their departmental meetings what they want placed on the consent agenda, too. So Correct. that's something we can talk okay. about. That's the routine procedure would be at, at, at the committee level or departmental, as we call it, level. Um, that's where the work gets done. And by the time it's on the formal agenda for adoption, everybody's seen it. They know it. They're going to approve it. So you don't need to have further debate. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Madam Clerk. Vote on it. Trustee Carter. Aye. Trustee Mariscal. Nay. Trustee Kazam? Aye. Trustee Gatt? Aye. Trustee Weisenberg? Aye. Trustee DeVore? Aye. Okay, that passes. Thank you. We have one other piece of business. It's an action item. Approval of the purchase of a fire, turn, fire turnout gear not to exceed $13,000. Trustee Weisenberg? Thank you, Mayor. I, uh... Bring up my agenda here. Can I get a motion to approve? Yeah, I'll just bring it up so I could read it. I move to approve the purchase of fire turnout gear not to exceed uh, $13,000. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, now go ahead, Trustee Weisberg. Thank, thanks, Mayor. Um, I, I did 
send an email to a few of you uh, regarding this request. Um, I'll just summarize that email real quickly. Um, our current set of protective gear was perfect purchased roughly 11 years ago. Um, the gear is imperative for the safety of the volunteers that we send to calls. The five sets of gear that we're requesting this year um, was purchased about uh, 11 years ago. Um, and it's for five of our officers that are um, our firefighters that are cleared for interior access. Um, this is a budgeted expense for this fiscal year. Um, so I would gladly to, uh, like to answer any questions that anyone has regarding it. I have no problem in voting for this to, I, I to, to save our uh, firefighters, protect them. They're out there putting everything on the front line. So I'm 100% I'm for this. I mean, it's already budgeted, and the chief's not going to ask for anything that they don't need, so I'm, I'm for it. Okay, Trustee Mariscal, is okay, that you? A, Go ahead. I have a couple questions. Um, so I think $13,000 right now, regardless of whether it was budgeted for or not, is mm. quite a chunk of money until we kind of try to figure out what's going on. Um, I did reach out to a couple large fire departments and find out if this was a law. Um, they said, no, it's not. Um, they do recommend it after 10 years, but if you've been taking good care of your equipment, cleaning it properly, um, you can go past that 10 years, uh, which I know, is, I think what uh, Trustee Weisenberg said 11, but I, I really think it's something we should push out a little bit and take a look at it, you know, maybe six months from now or so, just to see where we're at budget-wise. Okay, thank you. Uh, anything else, Trustee Mariscal? Um, no, I, I don't um, have anything else unless um, you guys have any questions for me about what I was told um, about the amount of time that we would have to replace that gear. Any other trustees? Any other trustees? If, if not, I'm going to let Chief Walters have the floor. I'd like to comment on that. Um, the 10 year uh, requirement is set up by NFPA, uh, requiring that fire departments replace their fire gear every 10 years. Um, this surfaced 2012, 2013, but there's been a big battle going on between NFPA and the National Volunteer Firemen's Council who is a large organization that represents volunteer organizations throughout the United States. Basically stating that small fire departments do not have the money to fund this. Uh, particularly if in that 10 year time frame, they have to, in one fell swoop, get, you know, change all their gear out in one time because of the timeline that's on it. And each, each gear, each set of gear that's made has a manufacture date stamped on it, so you can look at it. Um, NFPA is not a regulatory operation, however, IDOL, OSHA, NIOSH, they are, and they mandate that fire departments follow those recommendations. So therefore, I feel we are, you know, we have to follow those rules. Yeah, well, I, I know what's happened in the past couple of years. Right. This is something we've been wanting to do the last two or three years. I know the last two or three years in the budget, we had that 15,000 in it. But unfortunately, we had some catastrophic issues with some of our apparatus, and that money had to be used for that, I do believe. I think that's how it was shifted to be used, so we weren't able to. Um, but we're at this point now where we have the money to, and uh, I do know some departments in this area were visited by the Department of Labor, and they were gigged on the fact that all their fire gear was out of date. Um, and there are fines that can be assessed with that out of date. Um, one department in particular ended up having to uh, purchase all fire gear, every, every set at one time. So what we've come up with is this program that if we can buy five sets a year, in five, maybe six years, we'll have newer fire gear for everybody on the department. And if you start a program such as this, it's going to alleviate the problem of Department of Labor or any of the other regulatory agencies coming in uh, because they're seeing we are making this step forward. We are not a large department with a, with a large bankroll. 
We are a small department with a small bankroll, but we are, we are pushing forward to get this done. But don't you think they'll cut you some slack with the way everything's going right now? That even if we move this out, I'm not saying that you can't well, what I, what on this again, but all I'm saying is let's just move it out. Because what if something does happen to one of your engines or, or something that we need to pay for, and then we've spent this $13,000 on this when we could have moved it out right now? Well, if we I'm move it out, if we... If, I'm just saying, why can't we just move it out and take another look at it once we kind of know financially where we're going to be at after this whole COVID thing is over? If I can use the money we have available in this year's budget, that gives me a year in advance. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. I'm, I'm ahead of the game by a year. So that money is available to well, us right now, and I would like to that use that to get it started. Is, that budget is an estimate right now, if you ask me. We approved it just so we had a budget in place, but we also agreed that we would be very tight in the first quarter. And I don't think $13,000 is something we need to be spending right now. That's all I'm saying. Tr Trustee Marisco, this will, this, will come out of, this will come out of the current budget, not next year's budget. Correct. And we're Do talking. We have the, do that do you think it's something that we should be doing right now well because of the way our budget looks I would say if we're going to do it this is the time to do it because we don't know what the first quarter is going to bring next year's budget um, I will say that Chief Walters is correct uh, in when he says that he did budget last year or two years ago for this but because of a million dollar deficit yeah approximately we cut a lot of equipment back, equip, uh, vehicle purchases back. So that was part of that cut. So this is kind of now, it is in front of us. Um, and I do understand cutting some brakes. I think somebody could tell you they're gonna cut us some brakes. And I know this from the police side, they could tell you over the phone, we'll cut you a break if something happens. But I'm here to tell you if something happens and there's a big liability issue, I'm not sure that break's gonna get cut. So I'm not sure if you know we really wanna roll out on that island when it comes to liability but uh, anyway to answer your question if we're going to if we're going to make this purchase from what the chief said this is a, this is a, a, a big issue this is a budget to do it because this is a current budget not next year's now now if we were talking two three months uh, Trustee Mariscal, I would be, I, Chief and I would probably sit down and have a meeting and say, how can we go a different route with this because we don't know what this uh, first, first or second quarter is going to look like so and we're talking thirteen thousand dollars compared to five lives, so yeah. I I think we should pass this. Is there anyone else on the line that'd like to comment on this? That hasn't commented? No. Anyone it's gonna else? be covered on this year's budget. I don't have a problem with it. Before May. Trustee Wisemore gave you the last word. Anything else you want to? I'm good. Okay, <laughs> Madam Clerk. Trustee Carter. Aye. Trustee Mariscal. Nay. Trustee Kazam. Aye. Trustee Gett. Aye. Trustee Weisenberg. Aye. Trustee DeVore. Aye. All right, that passes. Uh, Chief, anything else? That no, thank you for your time for this. Uh, Trustee Weisberg, anything else under fire? Uh, I don't. We would be at the Treasurer's Report. Thanks. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. As of the end of March, there was $2,730,163.22 in the village controlled accounts. There was $1,163,208.60 in the water controlled accounts. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the treasurer's report. I so move. Motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion on the motion? I just want to take this time to continue to congratulate all of you and congratulate our staff here. The cash balance is continuing to grow. Of course, uh, it was pointed out we need to be very careful as this COVID-19 issue <laughs> unfolds. We have to have cash on hand, but thanks to everyone for their hard work on last year's budget. Thank you very much. Madam Clerk. Trustee Carter. Aye. Trustee Mariscal. Aye.
Trustee Kazam? Aye. Trustee Gatt? Aye. Trustee Weisenberg? Aye. Trustee DeVore? Aye. That passes. Trustee Gatt? I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Do you have a second? A second. All those in favor of adjourning signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. The ayes have it.